Wake up, wake up, and dream again. Get up, get up, sing with me, my friend. Olivia believes in dreams. Noah lives his dreams. We are the dreamers, come along, you'll see. Wake up, wake up, and dream again. Get up, get up, sing with me, my friend. Our dreams are the world we live in. We create the dreams we believe in. We are the dreamers and we love to dream. Hi kids, from A to Z, from East to West, I'm Noah and welcome back to Dream Again. Yeah, it's story time and it's Christmas and that's why we're going to have a magical story for Christmas. Today we have a special one, the fir tree. Let's start right away. Once upon a time, out in the woods stood a nice little fir tree. The place he had was a very good one. The sun shone on him. As to fresh air, there was enough of that, and round him grew many large-sized comrades, pines as well as firs. But the little fir wanted so very much to be a grown-up tree. He did not think of the warm sun and of the fresh air. He did not care for the little cottage children that ran about and prattled when they were in the woods looking for wild strawberries. The children often came with a whole pitcher full of berries, or a long row of them threaded on a straw, and sat down near the young tree and said, Oh, how pretty he is! What a nice little fir! But this was what the tree could not bear to hear. At the end of a year, he had shot up a good deal, and after another year he was another long bit taller. For with fir trees one can always tell by the shoots how many years old they are. Oh, were I but such a high tree as the others are, sighed he, then I should be able to spread out my branches and with the tops look into the wide world. Then. Would the birds build nests among my branches? And when there was a breeze, I could bend with as much stateliness as the others. Neither the sunbeams, nor the birds, nor the red clouds which morning and evening sailed above him gave the little tree any pleasure. In winter, when the snow lay glittering on the ground, a hare would often come leaping along and jump right over the little tree. Oh, that made him so angry. But two winters were past, and in the third the tree was so large that the hare was obliged to go around it. To grow and to grow, to get older and be tall, thought the tree, that after all is the most delightful thing in the world. In autumn, the woodcutters always came and felled some of the largest trees. This happened every year, and the young fir tree that had now grown to a very comely size trembled at the sight. For the magnificent great trees fell to the earth with noise and cracking. The branches were lopped off and the trees looked long and bare. They were hardly to be recognized and then they were laid in carts, and the horses dragged them out of the wood. Where did they go? What became of them? In spring, when the swallows and the storks came, the tree asked them, Don't you know where they have been taken? Have you not met them anywhere? The swallows did not know anything about it. But the stork looked musing, nodded his head, and said, Yes, I think I know. I met many ships as I was flying hither from Egypt. On the ships were magnificent masts, and I venture to assert that it was they that smelled so of fur. I may congratulate you, for they lifted themselves on high most majestically. Oh! Were I but old enough to fly across the sea? But how does the sea look in reality? What is it like? 
That would take a long time to explain, said the stork, and with these words off he went. Rejoice in thy growth, said the sunbeams. Rejoice in thy vigorous growth and in the fresh life that moveth within thee. And the wind kissed the tree, whoosh, and the dew wept tears over him, but the fir understood it not. When Christmas came, quite young trees were cut down, trees which often were not even as large or of the same age as this fir tree, who could never rest, but always wanted to be off. These young trees, and they were always the finest looking, retained their branches. They were laid on carts, and the horses drew them out of the wood. Where are they going to? asked the fir. They are not taller than I. There was one indeed that was considerably shorter. And why do they retain all their branches? Whither are they taken? We know, we know, chirped the sparrows. We have peeped in at the windows in the town below. We know whither they are taken. The greatest splendor and the greatest magnificence one can imagine await them. We peeped through the windows and saw them planted in the middle of the warm room and ornamented with the most splendid things, with gilded apples, with gingerbread, with toys, and many hundred lights. And then, asked the fir tree, trembling in every bough, and then, what happens then? We did not see anything. We did not see anything more. It was, it was so beautiful. I would fain know if I am destined for so glorious a career, cried the tree, rejoicing. That is still better than to cross the sea. What a longing do I suffer, where Christmas but come. I am now tall, and my branches spread like the others that were carried off last year. Oh, were I but already on the cart, were I in the warm room with all the splendor and magnificence. Yes, then something better, something still grander, will surely follow, or wherefore should I? they thus ornament me. Something better, something still grander must follow. But what? Oh, how I long, how I suffer. I do not know myself what is the matter with me. Rejoice in our presence, said the air and the sunlight. Rejoice in thy own fresh youth. But the tree did not rejoice at all. He grew and grew and was green both winter and summer. People that saw him said, what a fine tree. And towards Christmas he was one of the first that was cut down. The axe struck deep into the very pith. The tree fell to the earth with a sigh. He felt a pang. It was like a swoon. He could not think of happiness, for he was sorrowful at being separated from his home. From the place where he had sprung up, he well knew that he should never see his dear old com comrades, the little bushes and flowers around him, any more. Perhaps not even the birds. The departure was not at all agreeable. The tree only came to himself when he was unloaded in a courtyard with the other trees and heard a man say, That one is splendid. We don't want the others. The two servants came in rich livery and carried the fir tree into a large and splendid drawing room. Portraits were hanging on the walls, and near the white porcelain stove stood two large Chinese vases with lines on the covers. There too were large easy chairs, silken sofas, large tables full of picture books and full of toys, with hundreds and hundreds of crowns. At least the children said so. And the fir tree was stuck upright in a cast that was filled with sand. But no one could see that, that it was a cask, for green cloth was hung all around it, and it stood on a large, gaily colored carpet. Oh, 
how the tree quivered. What was to happen? The servants, as well as the young ladies, decorated. On one branch there hung little nets cut out of colored paper, and each net was filled with sugar plums, and among the other boughs gilded apples and walnuts were suspended, looking as though they had grown there, and little blue and white tapers were placed among the leaves. Dolls that looked for all the world like men, the tree had never beheld such before, were seen among the foliage, and at the very top a large star of gold tinsel was fixed. It was really splendid, beyond description splendid. This evening, they all said, how it will shine this evening. Oh, thought the tree, if the evening were but come, if the tapers were but lighted, and then I wonder what will happen. Perhaps the other trees from fo the forest will come to look at me. Perhaps the sparrows will beat against the window panes. I wonder if I shall take root here, and winter and summer stand covered with ornaments. He knew very much about the matter, but he was so impatient that for sheer longing he got a pain in his back, and this with trees is the same thing as a headache with us. But then the night came about. The family gathered around the tree. The candles were now lighted. Oh, what brightness, what splendor. Oh, what a beautiful tree. The whole family stood around the tree and sang a song. Then they opened the presents and the fir tree was so happy to see all their smiles. They danced about, they opened their gifts, and it was a joyful evening. And that, my little dear kids, was the end of our story. I hope you spend just as much time with your Christmas tree, because it came all the way from the woods and stood there and grew there for many years. Right? What a wonderful tree. Well, kids, good night. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas story. It was always fun to see you and to share this story with you. I wish you a wonderful good night. Sleep tight and remember to always dream again. Bye. Wake up, wake up and dream again. Wake up, wake up and dream again. Olivia believes in dreams. Noah lives his dreams. They are the dreamers and they love to dream. Wake up, wake up and dream again. Wake up, wake up and dream again. Our dreams are the world we live in. We create the dreams we believe in. We are the dreamers and we love to dream. Hi there! If you like what you see on Dream Again, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like us, and comment down below. Thanks!